Tonight, um, we're going to have the session moderated and managed by Rory Ketlin Jones. Now, Rory will be very familiar to many of you for the last 18 years. He's been leading the front line as BBC's correspondent on technology and business. And since uh, January 2007, he became the technology correspondent for BBC News. Now, Rory's background, although he's reporting on technology, really represents what the STIR Lecture and Design London is really all about, which is about stirring together all the different disciplines and taking a true interdisciplinary approach, you know, that goes and explains the most technologically complex in ways that all of us can value and comprehend whatever the discipline we come from. Now, Rory is therefore a, a real example of being able to someone who can stir things together. And I know he's going to be giving us a stirring introduction to our other speakers this evening, Martin Francis, the designer of mega yachts, mega sculptures, as you'll also hear, and get Hildebrand, chief designer from Mini. So without further ado, Rory, the stage is yours. Thank you. Not, but our first uh, lecturer is Gert Hildebrand, who uh, tells me that he began uh, his academic career in, uh, and his career in automotive design at the Royal College of Arts, graduating in 1980 from Europe's only at that time automotive design course. And um, uh, he says it's produced many of um, the great automotive designers of the last few decades. His first stop was at it's Opel. I'm about what is design. One important word is from Ovid, beauty stems from the truth. So only what is true is beautiful. You cannot make it artificially. It always has a true value, should have a true value uh, as a background. And uh, the defini de definition of art, in contrary, but in combination with the aesthetics and design is the fine, the true, and the good. So here again, you see the true. Today we are always used to put things into formula and uh, as an artist or as a designer it's nearly impossible. But if you are clever you can do it and I, ex I, I should tell you, try to do scientific elaboration in order to, to, to argue what you are doing and this is a trial. So it's not <laughs> mathematical uh, through formula, it's a self-invention. But it always helps. In Japan people are crazy, oh Germans invented design formula. Oh. <laughs> So actually what it says, and it's true, you know, design is a function over the form in the technical, economic, and social aspect, depending on the time you do it, of course, it's a time factor, and very important, the factor of the personal input of the individual designer in three, two, and one dimensional form. Design is always an individual task. Face, we talked about the first contact, the face thing, you see on the right hand side how our mini design phase developed and there are different, different rules or, or you know if you look at your friend he's smiling or not you find out sh how she how her day is and this can you can transfer into a rule again the Olympic map system put into car faces the Seat up there uh, or the Audi fits to the Seat to the BMW uh, the, the most dominant front of a car is of course the Rolls Royce. He works with this uh, Greek uh, uh, temple type of thing and uh, Alfa Romeo with a very erotic form of the triangle and the new Beetle and in between the Mini uh, between balance and stimulants. And here you can see how with little things you can adjust the look in a positive or negative way. And here the overall proportion are the same and only the lamps and the mouse change and you can really create a different expression uh, of, of a car, of a product. And it shows how dangerous is, it is if you mess up here. Uh, going back to why we are here today, uh, we have the, the four major parameters of making a product. It's the development, the production the, and the market and the design. This force force, the design, never is used really in this, uh, in this process. But let's look what happens. If you have only research and design, you sell blueprints to other countries. You have some engineering companies 
in your country you have a lot. Uh, we use them also in our company. And you sell the intelligence. You have no product, you have no production. Very dangerous thing. You have only design and marketing. That's a typical fashion or shoe industry. Adidas, Puma. So we have to connect these sort of things. And that's an important message. You cannot just design in one country and produce in another. You have to have a holistic chain of added value in, in, a, in an economy. I've designed, but one of the things I wanted to tell you about was some, some of the idols, some of the people who motivate me. And this, this, but this is the symbol, of, for me, of Brunel as, the, as a, an ingenious and uh, lateral thinking man. He was playing games with his, with his grandchildren, uh, flicking up coins and catching them in, in, in their mouths. And he got a coin stuck in his throat. And he was having great difficulty breathing. And they got doctors and everything. Nobody could get it out. So he sat down, designed a pair of forceps, sent it out to a tool maker who made this, brought it back, and the doctor got it out. And I think <laughs> that is a really good designer. This, my beginnings were in furniture, and I became a cabinet maker and taught, learnt the skills of actually building things with my own hands. Um, I then uh, started a long working relationship with Foster's and many years later did, worked on the, the Nomos table and was responsible for taking a concept of this and making it a production reality. It, it started off with something like 120 welds and we got it down to about six. Um, and I, something you probably never see, but part of the, of the Nomos system, for their office system here, they needed a wire management system and I designed this, this wiring spine which was inspired by, in fact, by, the, by the human spine. It's just two injection molded components, and, the, uh, and it has an earth wire down the middle, and the, the, you put all your cables down here, which you can thread through without taking the plug off. Um, and then, 10 years later, um, I was invited by Peter Rice, who some of you may know, he was a, an absolute brilliant engineer who was a director of Arabs, and he'd been invited to do the Science Museum in Paris, um, he had previously having done the, the Pompidou Center for Richard Rogers, he'd done the structure of that. He was invited by the French government to, to contribute to the special structures for this. And we together formed this company and uh, invented a system for supporting the glass, which now you see everywhere, which was this system. You, it's universally applied now, but this was the first time that uh, we combined uh, the use of cables and uh, glass. Uh, as Rory mentioned, I got into yacht design almost by accident in, um, in the late 70s through having moved to France because of an economic recession here. And I designed myself a boat because I had this idea it would be nice to sail around the world and I couldn't find something that suited me. So I designed an, uh, this boat and found somebody who could build it inexpensively. Um, and it's 46 foot um, centerboard sloop. Uh, and I think it was an enormous advantage not to have had a training in it and not to have known what all the problems everybody else had had because one could approach, I approached the problems on the basis that they were just design problems uh, and came up with a new way of doing, for example, the centerboard, which I've used on all the yachts I did subsequently. But it was light without an interior and so it went fast. And I then got commissions. This was my first commission, which was 80 foot, which wasn't bad as an 80 foot catch. And this is in 1980, so it was pretty significant. And straight after that, we got a, I got an order for two of these, which were the largest sloops in the world at the time. A yacht. Uh, the, thing, the cheapest thing about a yacht is the hull. Um, and the longer you make the hull, the faster it goes. So we're all, I always say to clients, don't tell me what length of boat you want. Tell me what, what you want in it. And then we try to optimize that by making you know, a longer and easily driven hull. So on. Now, that, that, that boat was 126 meters. This was for an illustrious... Uh, Russian gentleman who owns a football team, if you get me. Um, it, it's very, very similar what's being built. This had a 22-meter swimming pool on it, just to get you the texture. 60 crew members. So uh, this is for a private yacht. So it gives you a little scale, and it's 157 meters long. Uh, this was the pool, just to sort of give you an idea. Uh, this is underneath the pool, the, the uh, sort of sports club, and this was one of the one of the iterations of how it looked. 